Great, go. Great, thank you. As a preliminary matter, this is Brian Sullivan, Chair of the Affordable Housing Trust. Permit me to confirm all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Rima Sherry? Here. Meg Browers? Here. Dave Iverson? Confused, but here. Me too. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, Chantal Murphy? Here. Penny Dye? Here. Tom Dixon? Here. Great. Uh, staff, and I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Alice Ramos? Here. Vicki Marsh? Here. Uh, Christy Parentella? I think you said here. There you go. Uh, anticipated speakers on the agenda, I have Ann Kuspa. Here. Great. Uh, and Caleb, I assume you'll join us as well. Mike working. Here. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Good afternoon. This is a uh, open meeting, the Affordable Housing Trust is being conducted remotely pursuant to chapter two of the Acts of 2023, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Affordable Housing Trust is convening by a video conference via the Zoom app is posted on the town website, identifying how the public may join. Please note the meeting is being recorded. All attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the, the recording. All materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website. Unless otherwise noted, the public is encouraged to follow along using the post agenda unless we note otherwise. We'll turn to the first item on the agenda. Before we do, permit me to cover ground rules for effective clear conduct of our business and ensure accurate meeting minutes. I'll introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. We'll go down a line of members and eat, inviting each to provide comment or questions or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Remember to mute your phone or your computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate meeting minutes. For any response, please wait until the floor is yielded to you. Uh, and state your name before speaking. If you wish to engage in conversation with other members, please do so through the chair. Take care to identify yourself. Uh, for items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public who have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names, be acknowledged, and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote will be taken by a roll call. Um, with that, I'll switch over to the agenda and call the meeting to order. Um, a look for an approval of the agenda um, with the note that we may need to move item seven out of order based on um, Judy Barrett being able to join us in the timing. So we may hold that for a minute. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to review some late breaking um, meeting minutes. So my request of the group as we table those until a future meeting, the ones that were um, distributed this morning. Um, are there any other items on the agenda that anybody would like to talk about before we look for motion? I'll make that motion. Oh. Go ahead, Penny. Yeah, Sorry, just, Dave. Um, Brian, I just want to be conscious of not getting off schedule on approving the minutes, which are, do you need to look at all of them or just the most recent ones? Just the, just the most recent ones. There were three that came into my email an hour ago. Yep. I just haven't opened them. Can I? Sorry. Uh, yes, please, Alice. The ones that um went to your email an hour ago, they were already in the packet. I just figured that I could I should send it to you guys in a Word doc instead of um PDF, so you could like make the um, you could make your your changes there as a red line because Penny and I had talked about it um yesterday on the phone and she gave me her notes um okay. through the phone but it was better to send it that way there was only one that was brand new okay Meg uh yeah can you just clarify for us um the communication subcommittee meeting notes I I was not at the last meeting so I could be misunderstanding what's happening here but those are from 2023 we're reviewing so Proving last year's. So okay. um, those were minutes that um, was from way before I started working here. And um, they were missing from the website. And Christy and I are trying our best to have every agenda have the minutes to them. So um, I found it on the archives of my, um, from my predecessor. And 
I send it to you guys. I there's no video for it, so I couldn't review much of it. So awesome. So if I talk to that, Ellis would be, do we need minutes from the this year's March subcommittee meeting? No. That was um no. We have no. um all, most of the minutes that from the minutes that meetings that we have in 2024 are posted or almost. Okay, so that subcommittee meeting wasn't posted and there wasn't a quorum, so we don't need notes. Got it. Sure. And then my only edit at the moment is for the January note minutes. I'm not listed as attendant in attendance, but I was there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So you want me to go back to that uh, motion to approve the agenda? Yes, please, Dave. With with notes taken. And by the way, that reading of the script was amazing. Thank you. Okay. It's improving. <laughs> I'm through my like hundredth version. Um, okay, so there's a motion to approve the agenda with, uh, uh, as I noted, to potentially hold Judy until she's able to join us. Um, Ellis, are there specific dates that you want us to hold, or and can you let us know what those are? So we will hold March twenty first, twenty twenty three. Um, I can't find the video for it, but I'm I'm still doing my dig, like my digging for it. Where I'm um, approving twenty eight March twenty eighth, January sixteenth. We're skipping January 30th and March 26th. So there's three that you're skipping. March 21st, 2023, January 16, 2024. No, sorry. January 30th, 2024, and Feb and March 26, 2024. Great. And we're not skipping, we'll What's just that? hold them over. We'll just hold them over just until the next over. meeting. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, so with that, uh the motion on the table is there a second? Second. Um, and a, a vote to approve the agenda by roll call. Rima Sherry? Aye. Meg Browers? Aye. Dave Iverson? Aye. John Tom Murphy? Aye. Uh, Penny Dye? Aye. Tom Dixon? Aye. And Brian Sullivan said aye. Um, I'll open the meeting for public comment. Are there any members of the public? Are there any members of the board as members of the public? Penny, I think I see your hand up. If I have a board comment, I should just do it under board comments, right? Yes. Okay, never mind. I'm good. So board. Okay. Seeing no other action, I will close public comment. Um, thank you. So item four, approval of the minutes. Um, Christy, help me with this. Are we? Can we vote these as a block as we just amended them, or do you need them individually? My understanding is we've looked into this a little bit. Yes, um, so we can approve them as a block, and um, attendance at the meeting isn't required to approve the minutes of the meeting. Okay. So I'd be looking for a motion to approve the minutes as a block with the ones removed to a future date. Penny? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of January 16th, February 6th, February 13th, and April 16th, all 2024. Did I get that right? Omitting March 28th, 23, omitting January 30th, 24, and March 26th, 24. Great. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Penny. Before I take a second, Dave, do you have a question? Yeah, Brian, I don't think I was present on the 16th, so uh, we might have to divide this up, unfortunately. Um, I've been informed by staff by Christy that it's not necessary for you to abstain from okay. the vote or voting on the minutes. Perfect. Then I'm good. Tom? As a potential friendly amendment, do we want to add the 2023 subcommittee minutes into that motion? Or is that separate that Ellis did? That, I, I think that's a friendly amendment that. Yep. March 21st, 2023. Yep. Sorry. It was on another page. It, yeah. It was just above, it was above the line. Mm -hmm. Great. Is there a second on Penny's motion as friendly amended by Tom? Couldn't hear you, Dave. You're on mute.
I'm looking for a second. Second. Thank you, Dave. A vote by roll call, Rima Sherry. Aye. Uh, Meg Browers. Aye. Dave Iverson. Aye. Chantal Murphy. Aye. Penny Dye. Aye. Tom Dixon. Aye. And Brian Sullivan's and I. Um, thank you. Item five, uh, announcement. Affordable Housing Trust quarterly update to the select board. Um, Christy, will throw this to you for the update. Yes, um, so it's just an update to let everybody know that I'll be presenting to the select board tomorrow evening on the meetings at 5.30 p.m. And we did post a trust agenda in case we do have a quorum. Um, and Hal Keen will be there to give an update um, on the six fairgrounds Tacoma Green project as well. Great, thank you, Christy. Any questions for Christy? <clears throat> Penny? It's through you. Um, do, do you know where on the agenda this is? I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, it's kind of close to the top of the agenda, but it is a, a hefty agenda for the select okay. board. Thank you. I, I just, if I could just say that I think all the public, more public outreach, more public information I've seen lately, I, I think it's great. Um, I applaud Christy. Um, I think it was the missing link. And um, I think that uh, it really will go a long way to help the community understand what we're doing. So thank you, Christy and staff and everyone else involved. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, thank you Christy. Um, okay, with that, we will move to uh, item six, um, Dr. Dr. Dickler Housing Advocate Award. Christy, I'll come back to you for this. Thank you. Um, so just wanted to bring to everyone's attention who the nominations were for the Dr. Dickler uh, Award this year. So this is the second year that we've had this award. Um, and I first just wanted to um, introduce Anna Martinez, who has joined us in today's meeting, Howard's wife, um, and I just want to thank her for joining us today. Um, so the Dr. Dickler Award um, was established to honor Howard Dickler, who was involved in the neighborhood, really involved in all parts of housing, but was on the Neighborhood First Advisory Committee, um, which I also served on with him and had the pleasure of working with him. Um, and this award really honors a community member who embodies the spirit of Dr. Dickler on housing advocacy for our year-round community. Um, so we had nominations submitted, and um, what we're going to do is have the trust members submit their vote via email to me so that it will be confidential, and I'll work to get that information tallied and over to the moderator and the town moderator. Um, who Rima has connected with, has agreed to announce the winner at the beginning of annual town meeting on May 7th, um, so that it will be kept secret until then. So the nominees for this year's Dr. Dickler Award are Ann Kuspa, Mary Mack, Richard Hussey, and Tucker Holland. So I just want to announce that to the public. The trust members are free to make comments if they'd like, um, and then just to remind you to submit your vote via email to me. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. I'll come to Rima. Well, oh, Penny had her hand up before me. Yeah, just, just quickly, um, through you, Mr. Chair, to Christy. Um, two, two things. I, I believe it's a citizen award. It has to be somebody that's a citizen that's not employed in the in the field um can you just clarify that and then by what do you want by what time or date do you want i mean we need to get you our votes like soon good question um so those are the nominees that we received and wanted to announce um and it's up to the trust to decide if we wanted it to be um you know community member a non-paid housing advocate um, and if you guys could email me by Friday um, at the end of the day by 4 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Penny. Rima? Uh, yes, uh, to Christy through you, Brian. Um, could we, could you distribute the nomination letters um, to us? 
and then we can probably reply to that email with our vote. But it's I would like to read the um, the the letters of nomination if if possible, because that makes a difference. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Any other questions for Christy? Anna, would you like any would you like any moment? You're on mute, but I want to give you an opportunity. I, I yes, I would just like to thank the trust very much again for this award. It's such a wonderful recognition of Howard and I my our entire family just appreciate it so very, very much. And again, I also want to thank Christy for the invitation for today's call. It's a very nice to to join all of you. Uh, this was a, uh, something that was so important to Howard, and I'm now trying to follow in his footsteps to help this, this, uh, the island in any way that I can. So thank you again very much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And sharing Howard with us. <laughs> Thanks very much. All right. Um, with that, we will. Um, I'm going to jump item seven. And we'll hold that until uh, Judy's able to join us. I don't see her now. Um, we have item eight, uh, the purchase of a year-round housing occupancy restriction, an affordable housing restriction up to 240% area median income for eight and 10 Honeysuckle Drive. Um, discussion and action. I don't know whether to come to uh, Vicki or Christy first. How would the two of you? I'll, I'll punt it to Vicki. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, so I, I'm asking you to actually just approve of, to vote and approve of, um, these restrictions today. Um, I apologize for not having the actual restriction drafted yet. Um, I know I'm overdue in getting them to you. Um, but I will, um, have them probably by the end of this week for you. And, um, Again, if, if there's any questions as far as um, the restrictions, once you've received them and you wish to discuss them at the next meeting, we can certainly do that. Um, but um, I would ask you to at least vote and approve them um, subject to uh, final review and approval by, um, by the board members. Um, Great, thank you, Vicki. Um, Christy, do you wanna follow up or? Um... And then give we'll give Anne an opportunity and take any questions. Yeah, I was just gonna give um a brief overview. This was a request from Housing Nantucket on two of the homes that they're building in Honeysuckle um over in the Richmond development. And these are gonna be home ownership opportunities. They're three bedrooms, two and a half baths, um, and they currently do not have a deed on them. Um so Anne is requesting that the Affordable Housing Trust um, purchased the deeds and the price per deed is $45,000. So a total cost of $90,000 for the two deed restrictions. And this would require a year round residency and an income restriction up to 240% of area median income. And then I'm happy to pass it to Anne through you. Great. Thank you, Christy. It, Anne, do you want to share anything with us? Uh, and CUSPA, Housing Nantucket here. Um, really just, this is like belts and suspenders kind of uh, tactic that we're trying to employ here. Uh, we are putting a deed restriction on there so that these homes will be available to the community in perpetuity. So, you know, Housing Nantucket, as much as we're here 30 years, hope to be here forever, if something ever happened to us as a nonprofit where we weren't able to monitor these, then the it, the um, town has a right to um, make sure that this restriction will be held forever and ever and that the intended purpose and use of the property will be maintained um, in perpetuity. So even though, you know, at 240% AMI, it's, the you can't put something a, a deed restriction on forever like how we can with 150 percent ami there are measures that can be taken so that the it can be put on 
at the greatest extent of the law, which is 30 years, and then it gets renewed again. So I think that it's really good to have the town involved here so that um, it's just two sets of eyes and we'll be kind of passing along. Um, I see Vicki, maybe I misspoke. Sorry. And thank you very much. I'll come to Vicki, give her an opportunity, go ahead. So I, I just want to add one a correct one thing um in this and and I do apologize because I you haven't seen the draft of this restriction, but um because the town is involved as the holder of the restriction, um there is additional uh protection for this restriction to be in perpetuity. And that is because under general laws chapter 184, section 26, a governmental body may hold a restriction in perpetuity um, if it is going to be for um, affordable housing, for instance, in this case, you know, up to 240% AMI. So, um, so therefore, what we would do within the boundaries of the restriction is that we would also say that it's enforceable under um, General Laws Chapter 184, Section 26. So it's not just for 30 years, but it will actually be able to be in perpetuity. Um, Ian's correct that um, the statute, um, if a private entity um, is holding a restriction, um, it can't hold it in perpetuity. It would have to be held for 30 years and then extended. So this way by the town um, uh, having a role as far as uh, holding the restriction, it can be in perpetuity. Great, thank you, Vicki. Go ahead, Anne. Uh, yeah, so that's that's even better. So, um, <laughs> uh, and then just a couple other things that this allows the town to do, if there's any kind of issue later on, um, say, you know, for some wacky reason, when someone buys the property and then they go to sell years later, if there's nobody out there who wants to purchase the property who meets the 240% AMI restrictions, then the town can buy that and um, it makes them able to hold it themselves until an eligible purchaser can be found or if you wanted to rent it out. It just gives more capabilities to the town and um, it's kind of, I think, a good partnership for us to go in on this together. So I'm glad that um, that this is seems like it's working out. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Anne. And and just to clarify for the public, you've opened a lottery there. How much longer is are applications available for these? The application will be accepting applications until May 6th, and then the lottery is May 8th. Great. Thank you very much. Sure. Um so coming back to Vicky's comment, is there anybody um, about what she's looking for as far as action today? Uh, do, does any members of the board have any questions or like to make a motion? Mr. Chair? Yes, Tom. Through you to Vicky. Vicky, is there a mechanism to say the town wanted to change it back to 150 at one time? Is that is that possible or is it, how would that work? You want to change the restriction, the level of restriction? Yes. To 150? Um, well, the way it would, the way I thought we were drafting is this could be up to 240%. Uh, um, so the 150 would be included within that range. Got it. I just missed that. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I'll make a motion unless people have other other questions. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of a year-round housing occupancy restriction um, and an affordable housing restriction up to 240% AMI for at number eight and 10 Honeysuckle Drive to be held by the town. Great, thank you, Penny. Vicki, is that satisfactory? Uh, yes. And thank authorize you. the chair or co-chair to sign said <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Great. Thank you, Rima. Um, uh, Meg, for discussion. Thanks. I think that this is an amazing opportunity for the Affordable Housing Trust, given that if, by my calculations, we're looking at purchasing a year-round deed restriction for about 5% of the value, which is way below the 20% maximum we have for our own program. 
So I think it's awesome. And I also just want to say that I'm going to abstain from this vote. Okay. Thank you, Meg. Ellis? Penny, could you please, through you, Brian, could you please repeat your motion? My uh, headphone was breaking down. I couldn't write it. Oh, and I talked fast. I'm sorry. Um, I, I would like to make a motion that the trust approves the purchase of a year-round housing occupancy restriction and an affordable housing restriction up to 240% of area median income for number eight and 10 Honeysuckle Drive, said restriction to be held by the town. And um, with the approval, we authorize the chair or co-chair to sign documents. Great, thank you, Penny. And that was second at Ellis uh, by Rima. And I'll take a, a, any more conversation. Uh, vote by roll call, Rima Sherry. Aye. Dave Iverson. Aye. Penny Dye. Aye. Chantal Murphy. Aye. Tom Dixon. Aye. And Brian Sullivan's and I. Um, very exciting. I feel like that was our first restriction. And thanks for bringing it. Um, excited to to work with you on this one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Item nine, um, how, you're back up. Housing Nantucket request for funding on the house move for 66 Pro Check Av, discussion and action. Um, and I'll come back to you maybe to work through some of the questions from the last meeting and then um, we'll see where we go. Okay, sure thing. So, uh, and Crispa here again. And you'll recall last time we came with a grant request to create one affordable rental unit at 66 Pochick. This is a property that Housing Nantucket owns. It um, already has two affordable rental units on there. They're both single family dwellings. And now we'll be moving this third unit on there. Uh, we're, it's a, currently a one bedroom, but we'll be putting a bedroom in the basement to make a two bedroom unit there. And last time we were here, there were some questions that the board had. So just, I, um, just sent them a, like a response, but it was just a little bit before this. So I'll just verbally go over uh, what the responses were. And first there was a question as to whether we could make the basement or was the basement high enough? And we went back and checked with our architect and it is high enough. We're not putting any ductwork in the ceiling. So that's fine. Um, I also spoke with uh, Rieko uh, at EOHLC to ask her about whether since there's already two units on the premises, if we put this third unit on there, would all three units be contained or you know eligible for the shy list if that third unit is restricted at 80% AMI and has the affirmative fair housing marketing plan and follows all the other local action unit requirements? And she said that uh, they would consider it only one unit because it's a one unit project is what she was saying, even though, and I said it like 50 times, like, are you sure? And um, she said, that's the way that they viewed it. So only one unit would be eligible for the subsidized housing list. There were also questions about what deed restrictions were already on the property. And we found those, we sent them over, looked it, at it thoroughly, but basically there's a restriction that runs with the land. When the town gave the land to the housing authority, there was a restriction that limited the property for affordable purposes serving low and moderate income residents. And uh, that ties, we looked up the mass general law, what that all meant. And it's basically, it's 150% AMI on Nantucket. So um, that is the restriction on the property. And we were asked if we had considered debt um, to fund the project. And the answer is we're looking at that, but currently right now we are not doing that. That's not part of our business model. We're trying to start we're a subsidiary where we could kind of isolate that risk so that because there's a lot of risk in, in building, as I think we all know. So we want to be able to isolate the risk of our construction projects from the rest of the properties that we already own. So that's something that's in the works. But for this project, no. And um, just looked at a little bit more about what 
would work best for us. Of course, I know you all have buckets of funding that are available to you, but from our perspective, our preferred income bracket that we would like to serve here is the 100 to 120 AMI bracket. And um, we think that there's a demonstrated need there. It's this part of this missing middle uh, where it's not served by the 80% AMI um, restrictions from shy housing. And we looked at the Richmond company had a lottery in February of 2023 of all of their 70 80, 110, and 120% AMI brackets that they were trying to serve. Uh, the 110 and 120 AMI two bedrooms received the most applications. So there were 105 applicants for two units in that lottery. So it's there's definitely deep demand there. And our ready to rent list has, I mean, this is, we're kind of like, accepting applications on a rolling basis and have been for years. But at this point, the ready to rent list has over 329 households on there waiting for a two bedroom. And of those, we kind of sifted out who would be able to fit what the types of household that could fit a two bedroom. So that's like a single parent uh, with one child or a married, you know, partner relationship with up to two children of the same sex. So we filtered down all of that and it looks like at least 45 would be eligible in that bracket um, and also fitting that profile that would be allowable to live in a two bedroom. So I hope that helps. And if there's any other further questions, then um, we're happy to answer them. Thank you, Ann. Vicki? So Ian, I took a look at the restrictions um, on this property. And I think you had said when you were just speaking that you thought the restriction went to 150% AMI. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at this restriction and it says that specifically, I'm going to read from it. Um, the parcels are, are granted and conveyed subject to the restriction. They may be used only to provide low and moderate income housing for residents of Nantucket, consistent with the charter of the grantee which is NHA properties. And then for purposes of the foregoing affordability restriction, low and moderate income housing shall be defined in accordance with the regulations of the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, or any successor there too, but basically that's housing and urban, that's HUD. So how did you get to 150% then? Is there something that HUD has defined low and moderate is up to 150%? Uh, yes, as far as, I mean, you're the expert for sure, and, and please, but what I researched was chapter 184. Uh, here, I can put it in, I'm just clicking on it. Sorry, it's chapter 121B, section 38D of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts general laws. And there it defines low and moderate income household as a household with gross income at or less than 80% of the area median outcome or income um, dot, 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 provided, however, that in Nantucket or Dukes County, low or moderate income households shall mean persons and households earning less than 150% of Nantucket County or the County of Dukes median outcome as reported and okay. changed. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that's where you were getting that from. Um, I wasn't sure because like, like I said, when it doesn't state that in here, obviously, mm -hmm. in this deed restriction. So, okay. So it's um, great. That's terrific. All right. Good. Um, Sully just lost internet. So I'm going to hand it over to Rima. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I had just frozen a few seconds ago too, so good luck. Um, I'm gonna recognize Penny. Just very quickly, I'm familiar with this house that's being moved and it's a extremely um, well, well built and quality property and it's a great opportunity. So I support this application. Um, Christy, could you refresh our memory on, on what the amount of funding that's requested yes 
Um, and Brian's back. I am back. Um, so the request is for a grant up to $450,000. Right. Well, it looks like Rima and Penny both have things. Yeah, they I, to I was about. ready to make a motion, but if Penny has no, something. you go. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I would like to approve <clears throat> uh, this request for funding from Housing Nantucket for moving um, house to sixty six Pochick Avenue uh, for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, with the approval to be signed by the uh, chair or vice chair. Uh, is there anything else we need, Vicki? Um, has the select board approved of this? No, I guess we'll take it to them. Pen uh, pending select board approval. Pe pending select board approval. Second. Penny, do, do you have any comments? Or is there, are you... Just a sec I, will, I will second her motion. Great. For discussion, Tom? You're on mute, Tom. Pardon, I didn't hear the words up to 450 in the motion, just to be. Oh, I, yes, I'll say up to. Okay, great. So I think that friendly amendment's agreeable. Penny still has a second. Any other questions, comments, or discussion on the motion? Seeing none, take a vote by roll call. Penny Dye? Aye. Rima Sherry? Aye. Chantal Murphy? I, I didn't. One more I, time, thanks. Thank you, Meg Browers. Uh, I'm going to recuse myself from this as well. Okay, Dave Iverson. Aye. Tom Dixon. Aye. And Brian Sullivan's and I. Thank you, Ann. Hey, thank you. Yeah. So keep your eyes out. May fifteenth over the road. I know Let's new see. neighbors for me. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's see. Request for just item ten. Um. Request for Richmond development for the buy down units of phase five and six of Meadows two, known as Gooseberry Place. Um, Christy, do you want to open or do we want to pass straight to Andrew or? I'm, I'm happy to open. Um, so just a, a brief overview of this. Um, this is uh, similar to the two other buy down programs that the trust has considered from Richmond. Uh, the wildflower and violet place um, buy downs and those increased the affordability in um, the phases and um, also increased uh, the number of units that were um, available, not just at 80%, but at other income levels. So the proposal in front of you is to provide a grant to Richmond in the amount of 6.75 million in exchange for buying down a portion of their gooseberry place development. In total, it's 55 rental units. And so the original um, agreement was for them to have 25% of those units at the 80% area and median income. And this proposal would bring 12 more units into affordability um, at different income levels. And so a total um, of 27 of the 55 units would be uh, affordable versus market rate. Um, this would include an amendment to the regulatory um, agreement and the application to the EOHLC. And so we have had a discussion with EOHLC um, just, you know, to, to make sure that they were on board with this project and they didn't raise any red flags around this. Um, it's very similar to the other two projects. And I want to bring it forth um, to you, which would be contingent on a select board approval as well. Um, but these are under construction, and so the timeline is to try to get approval from EOHLC before um, in the middle of the summer. So I'm happy to hand it over to Andrew um, through you, Brian, um, for any other details or comments. Great. Thank you, Christy. Andrew? Am I off of mute? Can you all hear me? We got you now. I have to apologize in advance and thank you for recognizing me. I am uh, juggling two phone calls at the moment. 
So thank you for recognizing me. Thank you for considering this request. Um, we're happy to be involved in this transaction. I think this is going to be a useful um, program uh, for the Nantucket as a whole. Um, we're ready to do more, uh, some more affordability in our, our development as we've done as we've done previously. Uh, I think we've been through all the details. I'm happy to cover any particular questions, but um, we're on track to finish these the series of the final six buildings in our Meadows Two phases five and six by latest October this year. Um, we've just finished phases three and four, which involved some um, town trust fund uh, cooperation. We are, I think, I want to say a week and a half or two weeks out from a final certificate of occupancy for the final um, units in this in that phase. And uh, the foundations and um, box, the boxes are all on the island for the modulars for the phase five and six development and the foundations are being, foundations are being poured and foundation holes are in if you trip them back there. So um, I think the only aspect of this particular transaction we haven't discussed openly is um, any increment uh, as we proposed of municipal preference for the units that might be um, something the town is interested in. So we're open to that dialogue as well. If there are any particular questions, please feel free to ask. Great, thank you, Andrew. <clears throat> I'm open to the board for questions. Oh, I'll come to Christy first before the board. Thanks. Um, just wanted to clarify the most important part of this project is that these units would become eligible for inclusion on our subsidized housing inventory. And so if you combine these 55 units um, with the homes that Richmond is doing and Habitat for Humanity, um, that will provide the 62 units that we need to maintain safe harbor um, that expires at the end of this year, and that will provide two years of safe harbor. Um, so this project um, would really be uh, kind of our plan B or plan A um, as opposed to Tacoma Green. Christy, just for, for me to clarify, so that covers 25 and 26 up until December of 26 for Safe Harbor? Correct. And then and then we'll be looking for another 63 units at that point to maintain Safe Harbor. Okay. Unless we reach our 10% in that time. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Um, the additional 12 units, Andrew, uh, forgive me for not having it in front of me. What what AMI levels are we bringing those to? An additional two, Brian, will be at 80%. The remainder will be split between 110 and 120, which is a market pocket that we've been seeing is in great demand right now. You all are very well aware of the increasing cost of construction, the cost of living, inflation for goods and services. Um, we've seen a lot of families that are in need, in extreme need for housing, but priced out of the 80% units. We have a limited inventory of units at 100 and 110. Um, we do have a few at 120 um, with the loan, and this is unrelated, but with the loan for the single family homes, you'll be, I think you'll all be glad to know that each one of those has now a reservation. They're all at 80%, but they each have a reservation um, for qualified eligible families. So we are getting to the point where we are <laughs> out of new housing. So the only way for us to create more affordability is to convert market rate units. And we find that that 110, 120 segment is a really a niche need for the island for the incomes that, uh, and household sizes that are supported by it. Great, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, Anne echoed those statements in her application just prior to you that that was a high demand area, especially in the two bedroom um, unit size. For sure. Any other questions? Penny, did I see you? Yeah, I just, I always, I, I find it helpful sometimes to put the dollars to the percentages. Uh, 120 right now, the 136 is 163,000 a year, um, which is staggering, but that's where we are. Um, I would I think also this is not specific to this project, but I'd like to ask through you, Mr. Chair, if Christy, her office at some point could do a little chart of how many units we've created per year in the last five years that have gone towards the shy list. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Meg. Thank you, Brian. Through you to Andrew, is it possible for you to explain the rental, the monthly rental rate strategy? 
what are those tiers for the monthly rates? Uh, thank you, Meg, for your question through you, Brian. The monthly rates, are, are you looking for market rates, Megan, or are you looking for the affordable rates? Affordable, please. Okay. The affordable rates for an 80% unit currently, and this is based on 2023 figures, for a studio rent, that's $1,593 a month. The one bedroom is $1,816. The two bedroom is $2,009. And the three bedroom is $2,206. Again, those are for the 80% um, affordable. And I think these are all based on um, four person household size, just as a baseline. Um, as we increase up the affordability threshold, the studio units um, by formula come out to 1,950. The one bedroom comes out to 2,730. The, three be the two bedroom is 3,139. And the three bedroom is 3,461. That's at 110 restricted. The 120 restricted, the studio units are 1,950. The one bedrooms are 2,730. The two bedrooms, I'm sorry, I think I said two. The one bedrooms are 2,730. The two bedrooms are 3,445. And the three bedrooms are 3,803. If you looked at that and compared it to the market rates that we're charging for units, really the savings starts to expand in terms of delta when you increase unit size, which goes back to what Ann was saying, or what I heard Brian said, Ann said previously, which is for larger household sizes, you really start to see this effect kick in um, as you increase in the number of bedrooms, which is helpful because it's more, it's, you know, houses a greater number of people for a more efficient monthly rate. Thank you. Any more questions for Andrew? Dave? Uh, yeah, Andrew, did I hear you say that you were basing it on a four-person household? I think these base rents are based on a four-person household, yes, Dave. Is that sensible in a studio apartment? It's not sensible in a studio apartment. I am saying that largely because the they're, they're based off of what's affordable to a four-person household. This is just, a, it's a formulaic. They're based off what's affordable to a four-person household, which generates the 100% of AMI. Yep. And then they prorate the rents based on that particular figure and what is affordable to a four-person household, assuming that the total rental rate is 30% of their take-home income. Okay. And they scale it. So basically, in order to get to the 100% of AMI, they assume you have a four-person household, oh, and they scale everything off of that figure. All right. It just seems like the the, the smaller apartments are getting the raw deal. They're <laughs> they're not. Um, it's only because the starting factor that generates what your actual area median income is, meaning 100% of area median income, assumes you have a four-person household. So everything is pegged to that factor. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. Um, and just as a FYI to everybody listening, I don't know if anybody has more information than I do. Um, these rates are all based on 2023 published income figures. I assume HUD is going to publish those very, very shortly. They come out just around this time every year. So we'll see updated rents, updated utility allowances from HAC, and that's how we get to our final rents for um, all folks living in the restricted units. Thank you, Andrew. Yes. Any other questions for Andrew from the board? Okay, seeing none. Um, Christy, can you lead us through? Are we are, for? In, are we here for an action? Vicky, do you want to propose um, a motion for the group? I would. Uh, I'm. If the if the trust is so inclined um, to vote to approve of um, a grant uh, to Richmond of six point seven five million dollars um, for the buy down of uh, twelve um, affordable units um, at its meadow is it Gooseberry Place right. Phase five and six in Meadows two, known as Gooseberry Place. Right. Um, so I had 12, 12 affordable units 
um, in phase five and six, uh, Gooseberry Place, um, subject to approval by uh, the select board. Christy, and then I'll come to you, Penny. Um, and then just to add, um, if this is okay, Vicki, for the housing department to work with the select board on the municipal units in the proposal um, to determine uh, the need for municipal housing and how many units we might designate for our local pre uh, municipal preference. Yes. Great. Um, Penny, coming to you. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll make that amendment that Vicki just stated, but I'm going to change the amount to um, 6725000 not 750 because that's how it is stated in the documents. Okay, sorry. Laura, <clears throat> Great. Is is there a second um, or discussion on Penny's motion to approve the buy down of 12 additional units at Gooseberry Place for $6,725,000 and the housing office to um, continue working with Richmond Development on the, on the designation of municipal units outside of the affordability units. So I, I, thank you, Rima. For discussion? Seeing none, a vote by roll call. Penny Dye? Aye. Rima Sherry? Aye. Chantal Murphy? Aye. Meg Browers? Aye. Dave Iverson? Aye. Tom Dixon? Aye. And Brian Sullivan's and I. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you all. Um, moving to item 11, other business. Um, we have a, the next meeting intended for May 21st at 1230. Um, is there any other other business? Christy? Can we go back and to then the Penny? Judy. Judy's here if we wanted to go back to that agenda item. Perfect. Let me finish other business and then we'll jump back to that. Uh, uh, mine's a board comment, not other business. Okay. All right, so I will close other business and then we will move back to item seven, the year round deed restriction uh, pilot program discussion presentation from Judy. Um, hi, Judy. Hi, sorry, I'm late. No, you're perfect timing. We're still here. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Um, it's town meeting season and it's pretty crazy right now. Um, so I sent the revised version. I hope this is okay. What I did is I gave you both a PDF and a Word document. I think if there's any final tweaks you guys want, um, you can make them on your end or simply send me a red line. But I know you want to move this along, um, that you need to get this on the street. I don't think I missed anything. I could have. Um, I know there's been you know, some back and forth and you know, not entirely sure about some items in here, but I think this is ready to go. And I think Brian's frozen. All right, well, then I will jump in. Um, first off, has everybody had a chance to go over this i think or any questions or concerns yeah penny i've had a chance to go over it i need more time to go over it more thoroughly it's a lot this is a lot of work okay yeah i don't just so you know i don't think there's huge changes in this beyond what you already asked me to make yeah um but I can certainly understand why people want time, might want time to look at it. So I'm not being disrespectful of that. I just want you to know, I don't think you're going to find anything in here that you hadn't already discussed. I, I had a, I had a question on page four under eligible properties. Yep. Um, what about interfamily? Is that addressed interfamily situations? Interfamily transfers or what? Yeah. That yeah. is actually under other. Other. Thank you. You can see I, why I need more time. Oh, I'm here we are, existing property owners. Thank you. No problem. 
Um, anyway, right, I dropped off. Okay. Go ahead, Rima. We just had a question from Penny just to catch you up. Um, and I asked if any, everyone's had time to uh, go over this. Penny needs more time. So I think you're, that's up. And, and Meg has her hand up. Thanks, Rima. I was curious, I, as I mentioned, I wasn't at the last meeting, so perhaps you discussed it then. Where, uh, what was the basis for establishing the $2 million limit for the program? If anyone could fill me in on that conversation. I thought that was the limit. If I am wrong, I will change the number. I, I don't know that I don't know that you're wrong, Judy. I think that uh, you know in the proposal idea, looking at it as a pilot program with yep. a start and a finish, we kind of had to pick a a window of funds mm -hmm. with the hope that the home rule petition passes at town meeting and moves its way to the state. And then do we put additional funding towards it? Got it. Okay. So I wasn't. I think that was, <laughs> yeah, that was that was the basis, Meg, of kind of where we were. But I think it's an open dialogue opportunity. None of the none of this is approved. This is these are all the recommendations being made by Judy. So it's our opportunity to make edits and changes. As well, yeah. And there's been several edits to this over the last couple of iterations anyway. And like I said, I, I'm not averse to making more changes, but I think at this point, what might be more efficient is if you want to make changes on your end, send me back a red line. Just so I don't I have, think to, that, you have to keep going back and forth on this because I know you want to get this on the street. I think that makes sense, Judy. Meg, the, I think your hand is, is it still up or newly up? Both. Um, okay. Brian, through you to the committee, I guess, at large. Um, I think that this is an awesome program, like you mentioned, to get us through until and hopefully the home rule passes. So if we're looking at a max of 20% of the value of the home, we're thinking it's going to be like 300,000, 400,000 max, somewhere in that range for like the average year round home that's worth 1.5 to 2 million. I'm just doing back of the napkin math here, so bear with me. Three, four hundred grand a house. I think if we commit to like 10 for the first year, we'd have a really great thing to add to our list of accomplishments. So I would propose that we up that maximum to three million for that's my that's my proposal. That's my suggestion. Obviously open to the thoughts of the rest of the group. Uh, and maybe we want to talk about this in some other fashion, but that's just what I wanted to propose. I'm always up for spending more more money to capture more restrictions. Um, I think that that's a great idea. Uh, on the on the math aspect, there is a limitation under max affordable price of a property, and with the calculation uh, uh, capping at a million two at the two hundred and forty percent AMI level. Um, so if we take that out, and you're trying to target ten units, that basically it, it will get us near twenty. Um, it'll get us near the 10 units that you're thinking. Um, the, 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 the program itself, you know, will have its challenge, but what we do need to get it onto the, the street, as Judy says, to see where some of those issues come up. Right. I, again, I'm more than, if, if, if you want to make a proposal, raise a number, you have my support. Can, can I ask a follow-up question then, Brian? Yeah. Is your, are you coming at this from a new home buyer perspective? I think we're looking at it at, at, as both opportunities. I think that the the marketplace itself will create a struggle for, for new home buyers right. to qualify based on the, the where the market sits. So if we don't also look at existing owners, it'll, it's going to be problematic to get. We, we really need the unrestricted 240 opportunity to be able to support new home buyers. Right. So the and and, and we can't go there at the moment. Right. So the one point two cap you mentioned, and apologies, I haven't had a chance to read this through in its entirety. The one point two million cap val the value of the home cap that you just mentioned, that's part of our program. Yeah, so that would be the that would be two hundred and forty percent value of a current house. 
which is where the trust is restricted working with under our current um, charter, we'll say, and until a home rule petition that allows us to act above that, um, it's where we're able to act at the moment. Got it. Okay, thank you so much. Are there any more items? It, it, it seems like we do need to take the individual review, come back with the red lines and send them to Judy um, based on timing and some of the questions. So maybe we'll, um, can, can as a collectively as a group, can, can we try and do that for the Friday after town meeting? Um, and then we'll come to Vicki uh, with a question. Vicki, do you... So I just want to know, have, have we determined where this money is coming from? So I think there's been some discussion of potentially bonding because we're buying a restriction. Um, so it would potentially be connected to an approval. And I can't remember the article number at town meeting. Christy, am I correctly thinking that through? Yes, so we're we're having bond council review if it could be bonded funds. Otherwise, cash would be used um, from the override. Okay. So you've reviewed this with Brian. Charbet. Okay. Um, and has this received approval yet from the select board? No. No. Okay. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you, Vicki. Any other questions for Judy while we have her, Rima? Well, um, should we uh, send a draft to the select board so they can comment on it before we finalize things ourselves or is that just gonna get us in the woods? I think a good goal, since we're closer to it, would be to get our edits together and then send it as a edited draft version to the select board to familiarize them with it. And then we'll deliver that back to Judy for any final look. Probably the most efficient in process yeah. to get us. Okay. And, and in that, we can socialize the select board version with bond council. So when is your next meeting? When when do you want to take this up again? May 21st at 1230. Just anxious to get this out the door to you. Agreed. Okay. So will you be able to get back to me before then? any red line edits you want so that I can pull this together and hopefully say, this is it. Not I will let... push you to make a decision. <laughs> Just... No, it's great. It's great. We we need that. Thank you, Judy. Um, I'll let Christy answer that because unfortunately she has to wrangle us. I know. Uh, I was going to say, if the trust members want to get, send their edits to me by um, Friday, uh, what was that, May 10th, um, I can have it, I can request for it to be on the select board agenda for the 15th of May, and then possibly have all edits um, to Judy by, by that following Friday the 17th, and then we'll have a meeting the 21st. Love those. That'd That's be cool. great. Christy, that'd be perfect. Thank you. That is a very clear timeline. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so with that, if there's no more questions at the moment, we'll, oh, Tom. Judy, thank you for all your work on this. So you kind of are reinventing the wheel on some of this, the year on deed restriction stuff. So thank you. It's fine. It's actually, it's been a lot of fun. So it was exciting earlier in the meeting, Judy, Judy we bought a restriction um, on two units earlier today from Housing Nantucket that the trust will hold and own. So it's kind of the precursor to this program. So it's an exciting start. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Um, 
So with that, I guess I'll leave this open, this item open, and we will continue on um, back to item 12 uh, and board comments. And I know Penny has one that she wants to make. Yep, just just very quickly um, through through you, Mr. Chair, to Christy, on the closing cost assistance program, to what um, income level are we providing that? What 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 AMI percentage? Um, I thought that one hundred and seventy five percent AMI. Is there a reason we're not going up to two forty? Um, so this was brought to the trust. Uh, I think at the March meeting, as we were reviewing some of the edits and adjusting the income, um, the new HUD income levels, and the trust wanted to keep it at 150, oh, sorry, 175%. I'd like to suggest um, that we have this on the agenda in the future to talk about providing this assistant to pe assistance to people earning up to 240 as well. Okay, and um, thank you, Penny. Any more on that? No. Uh, Meg? Thank you, Brian. I'd like to request if we could add the Lease to Locals program back to an agenda in the near future to continue discussion of that opportunity. I think we can do that. Meg, do you have a proposal that you're looking at or something? like, Or do you just want to have a discussion around it? We can have a discussion. I think we should look at their proposal again um, in light of what we learned from Provincetown and how they manage their fair housing situation. And I'd just like us to reevaluate whether or not we want to be involved on any level with any amount of funding. Okay. I think, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, any other comments on that one or questions or any other new board comments? Seeing none, we'll close board comments uh, and we'll look for a motion uh, to adjourn to executive session, not to return to open session to consider the purchase exchange lease or real value of property where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of a public body. So Anybody much. want to make... Okay, so from Rima, and is there a second? Second. Second from Meg, vote by roll call, Penny Dye. Aye. Rima Sherry. Aye. Chantal Murphy. Aye. Meg Browers. Aye. Dave Iverson. Aye. Tom Dixon. Aye. Brian Sullivan's an aye. Judy, thank you for being here. Anna, thank you for being here. Anne, thank you for being here. Eric, I'll see you shortly. Thank you. Yep. Yeah.